straight ahead on Falcon Weekly. We're bracing for round two of the polar vortex. Find out how low those temperatures will go in our area and how you can stay warm in your dorm. Plus, we've got the latest update on the shooting at Falcon Manor that left one Montevallo woman fighting for her life. And music's biggest star showed up for last night's Grammy Awards. See highlights from the night's most buzzed about moments. Falcon Weekly starts now. Welcome to Falcon Weekly. I'm Kayla Gio. And I'm Madison Umbush. Thanks so much for joining us for the first Falcon Weekly of 2014. Alabama is preparing for a second wave of winter weather that's bringing a chance of snow Tuesday and early Wednesday. Falcon Weekly's Sloan Gibby joins us to take a look at this week's forecast. Hey Sloan. Hey guys. Uh, so we're, in, we're in for some really cold weather this week. Um, we'll see a drop in temperatures tonight as the Arctic air moves in and it's going to stay cold for a while. Temperatures will remain below freezing until early Thursday morning. Let's take a look. Here you'll see the National Weather Service predictions of snow and sleet for Central Alabama this Tuesday afternoon and Wednesday morning. Um, you can see in the south, will be about two, two inches from around Montgomery downwards. Now these, um, these temperatures and predictions have been changing all throughout the day. So the lines may have, um, may change a little bit, may go up or down, but here's like an idea of what to look forward to and um, what to expect. Um, in the north, there'll be about an inch to an inch and a half. And then towards North Alabama, there'll be a light dust of sleet and um, icy condition for the road, so be careful for those and um, use precautions while driving and um, make sure to pay attention to the weather updates. Um, looking forward to the weather for the rest of the week, temperatures will plummet Tuesday and will remain freezing until Thursday afternoon. And, but for the weekend, we can expect a little bit warmer temperatures. Um, temperatures will rise as high as 65 on Sunday and that's a, week, a look at this week's weather. Back to you guys. This week's cold snap isn't the first time we've dealt with this type of winter weather this year. This blast of sub-freezing weather is impacting most of the eastern United States. As Indra Peterson's reports it, it could impact the Super Bowl as well. Midwest. Today, it moves down the east coast, and by Tuesday, it flows into the deep south. The bitter cold system will bring another round of sub-zero temperatures. This morning, schools in Chicago, Milwaukee, and parts of Minnesota and Iowa closing their doors and asking parents to keep their kids home. Wind chills of 30 below in Chicago are forcing officials to action. There's too much of a danger of them getting frostbite or hypothermia. In northern Texas, Mother Nature is leaving many with weather whiplash. It was in the 70s on Sunday, and just 24 hours later, temperatures expected to plummet around 30 degrees. These cities saw sub-zero temperatures way below average this month, and the worst has yet to come, a mounting concern for families in the Midwest who rely on propane to heat their homes. Shortages and price increases making it hard for 12 million Americans to stay warm. There are people that are down to 5%, 10%, and with this cold weather coming up, they're going to be out. In New Jersey, the Denver Broncos and Seattle Seahawks are arriving in the area for Sunday's Super Bowl game. The menacing winter weather has officials anxiously monitoring the forecast. They need to decide by the end of the week whether to move up the date of the game or change its time. As of today, the forecast is a chance of snow for the weekend, but just cloudy conditions during game time. Here in Alabama, the cold weather has Governor Robert Bentley issuing a state of emergency because of fears of a propane shortage. The emergency declaration allows the governor to temporarily relax laws that put a limit on who can sell and ship propane. 
We also want to make sure that, uh, that people who need propane can buy it from, from different individuals. Uh, so all the rules and regulations are weighed uh, because our farmers and our people are suffering right now, and so I've declared this state of emergency to help. Governor Bentley says he will keep the state of emergency in place as long as necessary. The cold weather has many UM students looking for ways to stay warm in this frigid weather, but there are some safety concerns to consider when living in a dorm. Falcon Weekly's Tom Davis joins us to live to explain what students can do to stay warm and safe this week. As temperatures drop to freezing and below, students not only have to wrap up outside, but also remember to keep warm inside. Heating in the university dorms, such as Peck Hall, are all controlled individually but some students want to be even warmer in their dorm room. However, there are several items that UM's housing office does not allow students to have in their dorms. We don't allow items such as electric blankets, space heaters, um, anything with an open flame for the residents' safety. We, um, safety is the number one priority for us and for our residents, so we want to ensure that people are safe and we don't want to create any kind of fire hazard. And unfortunately, some of those items um, do create a fire hazard, so that's why we don't allow them. All of the regulations are listed in the housing handbook. Housing officials also tell us that if your room gets too warm, you should avoid opening windows because it can strain your building's heating system. Reporting live from campus, I'm Thomas Davis. Back to you. Now to an update on the victim of a shooting in the Montevallo apartment complex last week. 20-year-old Lauren George is awake and speaking to her family. A source says she is alert and responding to commands. The shooting happened last Monday at the apartment George lives at with her fiance, Jonathan Jones, on Overland Road. And I heard Jones said a group of people came, came in to rob them. An argument broke out and shots were fired. George was shot in the head and was in critical condition until last Thursday. Police arrested 18-year-old Terry Searcy and Kevin Gutierrez. Both are charged with one count of first-degree assault and first-degree robbery. Montevallo student Joel Nelson was driving by as the shooting happened. Montevallo Police Chief Jeremy Littleton says this is an isolated incident and the community remains safe. For more updates on Laura and George's condition, like UM Falcon Weekly's Facebook page. A vacation gone wrong, Royal Caribbean Cruise Line is searching for answers after a stomach virus outbreak forced one of its 10-day cruises to end two days early. A spokesperson from the CDC says more than 600 people aboard the ship got sick from a possible stomach virus with symptoms including vomiting and diarrhea. The ship, Explorer of the Seas, left Cape Liberty, New Jersey on January 21st and has been in the Caribbean. A spokesperson for Royal Caribbean says the ship skipped a planned stop Saturday in Haiti and headed straight to Puerto Rico for an extensive cleaning. One passenger says he has seen this problem happen before when using Royal Caribbean. Never come back again. Yeah. Not on this cruise line. Yeah. We were here with them two years ago. The same thing. The ship was overrun with this sickness. Yeah. Um, the ship will arrive back in its home port on Wednesday. A Maryland shopping mall reopened this afternoon with more security than usual after a gunman killed two people and then himself on Saturday. This sign is on display encouraging people to lay a flower in the fountain and write a message in memory books in honor of the victims and their families. Investigators say Darian Aguilar shot six to eight times from a 12-gauge so shotgun, killing 21-year-old Brianna Ben Lolo and 25-year-old Tyler Johnson.
Police are currently investigating Aguilar's motive. Lawmakers are back in Washington this morning as we learn new details of the President's State of the Union address Tuesday night. This is expected to help launch Obama's second term rebooting following a rough 2013. The President's advisors says he is willing to sidestep Congress in the upcoming year. CNN's Brianna Kilar reports. It's crunch time for President Obama, making final edits on a speech he hopes will be the start of a turnaround. I think the public ended 2013 very frustrated. Obama's approval rating is slowly recovering, but he's still more unpopular than at any of his past State of the Union addresses, due in part to the botched rollout of his health care law. On Tuesday, he'll tout a new plan to narrow the gap between rich and poor, even if he has to go it alone. He's not going to tell the American people that he's going to wait for Congress. He's going he's gonna to move forward in areas like job training, education, manufacturing on his own to try to restore opportunity for American families. That means executive actions and public-private partnerships trying to get something done in a key midterm election year facing an uncooperative Republican-controlled House of Representatives. The he declared this to be a year of action. It sounds vaguely like a threat. The go-around Congress plan already rejected by Republicans who say Obama's abusing his executive power. I think it also has a certain amount of arrogance in the sense that one of the fundamental principles of our country were the checks and balances. The one major legislative item Obama has his eye on is immigration reform, despite House Republican opposition to a comprehensive plan. It was one of Obama's big agenda items in last year's State of the Union, but it stalled, along with expanding background checks on gun sales and increasing the minimum wage, which he will push for again Tuesday night. Presidential power is something that is fought out every day, and one speech isn't going to fundamentally change his position. But what he can do, potentially, is begin to lay out some themes to define the 2014 legislative and electoral battle. Rihanna Keeler, CNN, Washington. You can watch the President's State of the Union Address on any major news network tomorrow evening, January 28th at 6. Turning to campus news, voting has begun for Mr. and Ms. Montevallo elections. Here is how students can cast their ballots. Students can, cast, can vote for their favorite candidate by logging on to orgsync.com under the University of Montevallo page. Once logged in, students can click on the SGA election group and find the polls tab on the left-hand side of the screen. Voting will continue until Wednesday, January 29th at 3 p.m. The winners will be announced February 8th at College Night. The university is looking to create a group on campus to assist our student veterans. According to UM's Coordinator of Veteran Affairs, an interest meeting for creating a chapter of the Students Veterans of America will be held this Friday. The meeting will be at 2 p.m. in the Student Union Conference Room. That's on the second floor of Palmer Hall. Anyone interested in learning more about Student of Veterans of America is invited to attend. The 56th Annual Grammy Awards provided lots of highlights and surprises. Find out who walked away with the gold. And a change is coming to a food aisle near you. Find out what the FDA is doing to update food labels. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Falcon Weekly. From rock to rap to country and everything in between, music's biggest and brightest stars turned out for the 56th annual Grammy Awards in Los Angeles Sunday. And as usual, the ceremony was full of surprises. Reporter J.D. Cargill has the details. And the Grammy goes to Random Access Memory. The artist who took away the record and album of the year didn't sing a single note or give an acceptance speech. Daft Punk won the two coveted awards at Sunday night ceremony. The silent and helmeted duo also performed their hit, Get Lucky, with Pharrell Williams and Stevie Wonder. Lord's hit Royals won Song of the Year and Best Pop Solo Performance. Speaking of royalty... Paul McCartney and Ringo Starr were honored with a Lifetime Achievement Award for their work with the Beatles, just days before the 50th anniversary of the Beatles' invasion of America. The Grammy Awards are known for interesting collaborations, like Metallica and classical pianist Lang Lang.
but the biggest collaborations were the 33 couples who got married during the show, with Queen Latifah officiating and Madonna serving as maid of honor. Macklemore and Ryan Lewis helped out as well with their hit, Same Love. The duo took home the Best New Artist and Best Rap Album Grammys. On the countryside, Casey Musgraves got Best Country Album and Country Song. Oh my God, I can't even, I can't even, but I got to make a record that I poured myself into and I'm so proud of. Many UM students watched the Grammys and we wanted to find out what they had to say about the award show. So we sent video journalist Irene Cardenas around campus to see what students are saying about this year's Grammys. Take a look. I felt like the Grammys was kind of dragging a little bit, but I felt like Kendrick Lamar performances was really high energy. I also really liked Mac Lamar uh, performance. I liked the overall ideal and the thought of everyone uh, getting married and the equality and having Mac Lamar with Madonna, you know, on the stage at the same time was pretty awesome. And being a country girl at heart, I really enjoyed seeing Merle Haggard and Willie Nelson and Blake Shelton and um, Chris Christopherson all come out and do their um, do their song and all the collabs that they did. Um, there was a lot of good points. Um, I really, I was kind of happy um, with all of the results. Kendrick Lamar got nominated seven times, I think, and didn't win anything. And Macklemore won like four awards. And I don't understand how he beat out Jay-Z and Eminem and Kanye West and Kendrick and J. Cole. I'll say Katy Perry. Um, I felt that her set um, was, was amazing. I felt um, her detailing and her background dancers, her, her music, the choreography, everything just worked really, really well. There was a lot of good points. I really, for the most part, I really enjoyed the Grammy. While many artists celebrated their newfound Grammy Award, one singer-songwriter in particular celebrated a moment a little too soon. On Sunday night during the announcement of the winner of the Album of the Year, songstress Taylor Swift stood up thinking her album, Red, was being announced by host Alicia Keys. Instead of Daft Punk's album, Random Access Memories, was called to the stage. Swift recovered quickly from the shock and applauded the band for their win. It will soon be easier to make healthy food choices when you're shopping. The FDA is looking to update labels this year. They announced they're giving the outdated design the first upgrade in 20 years. This is an attempt to cure confusion in trying to understand package labels. The exact changes are not certain, but we can expect to have labels that are easier to read. And it seems that everyone agrees there should be less of a need for math when trying to calculate calories. A date for the changes has not been released, but the FDA says they will happen this year. Arts and crafts retailer Michaels has some bad news for their customers. The company said Saturday it may have been hit by a security breach. Michaels said it recently learned possible fraudulent activity on some of its customers' payment cards. CEO Chuck Rubin says that the breach has not been confirmed, but they want to alert the customers. The company didn't release details about when the breach may have happened or which customers could be affected. Michael is advising customers to check financial statements for fraudulent activity. Valentine's is just weeks away, and now it will cost you a few cents more to mail a Valentine's Day card to those you love. The United States Postal Service has increased the price of stamps from 46 cents to 49 cents. This is the largest increase for consumer postage prices in more than a decade. The NFL season is wrapping up with the Super Bowl this Sunday. The Denver Broncos' strong offense takes on the Seattle Seahawks' steamy defense. Should be fun, Scott. Yeah, we are looking forward to um having a lot of this story coming up next about this Super Bowl. I'm here, it's on me. Yeah. Welcome back to Facum Weekly. I'm Weber Scott with a look at this week's sports. The NFL Super Bowl 48 is scheduled for Sunday, February 2nd at 5.30 p.m. The Seattle Seahawks and the Denver Broncos have both arrived in East Rutherford, New Jersey and are ready for the Sunday shootout. 
The sports media says Peyton Manning and Russell Wilson are going to be major factors in who wins the game. But the other major factor will be the frigid low temperatures at the MetLife Stadium. The predicted temperatures for the game is the high at 38 degrees and the game's low will be 23 degrees. History has shown that star players are usually not the players to change the outcome of the game as Madden Super Bowl s simulation and others picked the, the Broncos to be victorious. Hawaii hosts the 2014 Pro Bowl with a new twist this year. This year, the NFL's best players were chosen by Hall of Famers Deion Sanders and Jerry Rice for a real-life fantasy draft in an attempt to boost the All-Star Game's ratings. Prior to this season, the Pro Bowl had the best players from both conferences to duke it out for the title. Players from the same teams were now rivals for the first time. This game was a back and forth defensive struggle for most of the contest and very competitive for an exhibition game. Team Rice made the score 21 to 20 with Alex Smith finding DeMarco Murray for a 20 yard touchdown late in the fourth quarter. Instead of tying the game, they took the lead with the Panthers fullback Mike Tolbert crashing in for the two point conversion. Team Wright outlasted Team Sanders 22 to 21. The 22nd Winter Olympic Games are scheduled to officially take place between February the 7th through the 23rd in Saki, Russia. 98 events in 15 winter sports decline will be held. The Saki Olympics will be the first Olympics in the Russia Federation since the USSR in 1991. Although the Russian police security is downplaying security problems, the U.S. officials plan to use emergency U.S. evacuation plans to protect American athletes. Finally today, gorillas running on the street is not what most would expect to see on a Sunday morning. However, this was the site of downtown Austin. Hundreds of people suited up in their gorilla costumes for the fourth annual Austin Gorilla Run over the weekend. Some folks even dressed up a flying, as flying monkeys from the Wizard of Oz, and other runners dressed up as giant bananas. The race helps raise money for endangered mountain gorillas in Africa. There are currently only 900 left in the wild. That's all the time we have for now for this week's show. Thank you so much for joining us. For more UM news, be sure to check out the Falcon News Network blog. The web address is on your screen. We'll see you again next week.